Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner, and today is stage four of the Vuelta a Catalonia. Summit finish, second one back to back. Yesterday was a great stage to watch. Today is another one. Textbook racing today. Ineos just absolutely fabulous on their team tactics. Strength in numbers, solidarity, always staying together, never panicking. Right away, a big break gets away on the first climb of the stage, and they gain three plus minutes. When I get on the couch, I'm watching at about 50, 60K to go. That break has about two minute lead. Leonard Kamna's up the front with about a three, three and a half minute lead. He's one single rider and he's got to go up an 18 kilometer long climb. And he has Ineos Grenadiers back there chasing with Rowan Dennis. Not much chance for a solo rider up there. What I'm most impressed about when you see the team of Ineos, they bring back a large size break even before the last climb starts. That takes off massive pressure off Adam Yates. And that's just Rowan Dennis back there riding with Jonathan Castroviejo. They have Luke Rowe, who must have been riding earlier in the stage and got dropped at some point in time. When I'm watching it with my coverage on TV, he's already gone. There's six Ineos guys left. And I'm watching Rowan Dennis, and Jonathan Castroviejo, two guys on the front, no other help from other teams, pulling back a 10-man break. I mean, this is a good size break that should have at least gone halfway, if not three-quarters of the way up this last climb. But Rowan Dennis and Jonathan Castroviejo, they had to be impressive today because to bring back a break of that size before the climb even starts, very big work and good, impressive legs. When the climb starts, Leonard Kamna's up the road still, but... That poor kid, he's been solo for a long time. So it's not going to get far up the climb. Rowan Dennis, who's already riding 80, 90 miles on the front of the group, rides the first part of the climb. And he rides from 18 kilometers when the climb started to 13 kilometers to go on the front and just disintegrates the whole field and brings it to the lead of the climbers of this year's race. Also catches Lim Leonard Kamna before he even pulls off. That's how impressive Rowan Dennis was. Now, to keep it in perspective, Rowan Dennis years back was hyped up as being the next Grand Tour GC stage race winner. Now, we've seen these had some problems when it was Bahrain Meridia. Didn't like the team, didn't perform well that year, left the team. And of course, on the Butterfly Effect, I talked about how he had a different bike sponsor for the World Championships and won. Now he's on Enos Grenadieres. Clearly he's happy and he's motivated and he's riding unbelievable. To do the kind of time that he spent on the front and then start a summit finish and ride the first five, six, seven K of this climb and disintegrate the field before he finally pulls off, this guy's the real deal. His talent and his legs are amazing. Now, I want to talk a little bit about him because He's gone second at the Tour of Swiss in years past, so you know he can climb and you know he can ride GC. But he's chose more now to focus on doing his time trials, wins, and of course riding for the team. you got to imagine that it's more the effect of how difficult it is to be a GC rider. The stress levels change dramatically. They're changing throughout the whole, every stage, throughout the whole stage, you always have to be in perfect position. You got to be in the right place. You got to rely on your team. You can't panic. You have to be there. When you're a domestique rider, you can switch all that off and you can just ride hard. When you start the last climb, like Rowan Dennis, clearly he's already ridden a lot, but now on the last climb, you don't have to worry about how far you got to get up the climb. You just need to do some of it. And he can go hard. You can shut the brain off as a domestique rider and just drill it up the climb. And that's what Rowan Dennis does so well. What he does is ride on the pedals hard and blow guys up and kill dreams back there. So while he's doing that, he's drilling it. He's bringing back Leonard Kamna. Right after that, he pulls off the front. It's Richard Carapaz taking the lead with about 13K to go on the stage. Now, with 11K, he gets a bike problem and pulls over. Yumbo Visma's Steven Kreiswick right now takes this opportunity to attack. And this, this is a, you know, kind of a strange move, but you got to do it. When you have a strong team like Ineos Grenadiers, you have to take advantage of whatever you can. If the guy has a bike problem, 
it's time to attack. So he has a bike problem. Steven Kruiswick jumps away. When you watch the video, Carapaz is coming back and he's all relaxed because they have G. Thomas on the front who's controlling everything at a smooth pace. Sure, G. Thomas knows Carapaz is coming back, so he's setting a pace where Carapaz can come back through the group still, get back to the front, and continue his work. When you see Steven Kruiswick jump, Carapaz immediately and changes his pace setting because now he knows he needs to get to the front right away so that they can still save G. Thomas for later in the stage. Carapaz returns from the bike issue, gets back on the front, still rides 10 kilometers total on today's mountain stage. One rider doing 10K. He rode basically from 13K to 3K to go in fabulous style. Now, with 7K to go, it's the Colombian from yesterday. Chavez does an amazing acceleration, and he's going early. Talked about on the butterfly effect yesterday. He went late, almost brought back Adam Yates at the finish of the stage yesterday. Today, he's not waiting to go late. He's going early, and he's going solo. This tactic really worked for him today because, one, he's down on GC, about a minute and a half, whatever it was, down on GC, so he's got some room to play. He is, without a doubt, one of the best climbers in this group. That's a big help. And three, and this is big, Ineos is not greedy. They know they got the stage win yesterday. They have the race leader today. They're sitting first, second, and fourth on today's stage with a possible chance of putting all three on the podium. That sounds greedy, right? But if they're really greedy, they could go and try to take today's stage win too with Adam Yates. On the butterfly effect during Perry Nice, we talked about Yumbo Visma. When Yumbo Visma on the second to last stage drove that day, blew up their whole team, sent Primoz Roglic up the road to win the stage. That is not the tactic that Ineos is employing today. They are employing the whole team stay together, keep safe, protect the jersey. Maybe we take top three on the GC general classification too. We don't need another stage win. If we keep it together, we're going to win this thing and we're going to go home with a strong team and spend less energy doing it. That's why I like today's stage. When I talked about on Perry Nice's second to last stage with Primoz Roglic taking the stage win from Gino Mauter there, the Swiss rider, I didn't like that tactic. I never like blowing up your team for no reason when you've already dominating this race. I always felt as a pro rider, you want to win the overall. You want to show you're the best rider in the race, but you don't need to dominate and take the whole pie. Today, that's what Enos is doing. That's why I like their tactic. They ride the way you're supposed to ride. Sometimes for fans at home, you can call this boring. I look at it as quite beautiful. I like chaos too because it works great for when I'm telling stories. But when you got riding tactics like this, it's a thing of beauty to watch. Carapaz continues riding on the front. Doesn't even change the pace when Chavez attacks. You see Adam Yates, Richie Port look left over at Carapaz. Never change the pace. He knows, Adam Yates knows, he has three teammates in front. Carapaz is clearly still riding strong. He's still got G. Thomas, and he's still got the old man, Richie Port. The only reason to panic, win general classification, keep your team together. If at any moment, let's say his bike breaks, we just saw Richard Carapaz have a bike problem, right? So this is not far-fetched. Adam Yates has a bike problem. He has three teammates right next to him. Any one of those teammates, he hops off his bike, jumps on that bike, continues, continues today's stage, and is still in the race leader's jersey when the stage finishes. That's why I like their tactic. They're always safety in numbers when it's your teammate around you. Now, Chavez does an amazing dig. He's holding strong the whole time. From behind with about 3K to go, it's Movistar lighting things up with Enric Moss. Enric Moss does an intelligent attack when the... the the climb dips a little bit and starts coming back up, so he's getting a little bit of rest and a little slingshot. The attack, if he's good, it's a good time to do it when you're coming off that descent to get a slingshot so that Carapaz is tired on the front. The only thing I didn't like about the tactic, at that point in time, it looked like Chavez was too far away for Enric Moss to know that he could single-handedly close that gap. I thought it would have been better if you just go to the front of the group and just pace the group as hard as you can, get them closer to Chavez and hope you have Valverde back there who can win a sprint. He's perfect on a stage finish of like today. This is what 
Alejandro Valverde has won a lot of races on summit finishes in a small group like we saw today. So when Enric Moss went solo, I thought it would have been better had he just went to the front of the group and pulled him closer to Enric Moss and hoped that some other guys from the back would do the final closure of the job. He doesn't. He blows. He comes back. When they catch him, Enric Moss decides at that point in time he's going to pull the, the group of favorites as close as he can to Chavez before he blows and pulls off. And then back there... Richie Port, for, first G. Thomas takes a short pull, maybe 1K after Carapaz pulls off. And then Richie Port hops on the front and just pulls the group all the way to the line. Enos, impressive ride, sitting first, second, and third on GC right now. Fantastic tactics. Chavez with fabulous legs. Yesterday a little mistake, but he's perfect today. Seven kilometers solo to the finish for a beautiful win. And Bike Exchange's first World Tour victory of the season. Congratulations. Well done, Chavez. Look forward to seeing him in the future races. Looks like he has his legs back. We haven't seen him for a good two years riding like, we, like we're watching in today's race and yesterday's race. So look forward to seeing Chavez later in the season. Hope you guys like this edition of the Butterfly Effect. We'll see you guys real soon.